I didn't expect Kaiji to become one of my favorite anime. When I went into it, all I really knew about Kaiji was that it had a very distinct art style, and I was pretty sure Kaiji got stabbed in the ear. And I was okay with all that, and everything I'd seen said that Kaiji was good and you should watch it. And I agree. If you're planning on watching Kaiji, go do that, and you should. Uh, and go do that now, because I'm gonna spend this video just spoiling the shit out of it. Because <laughs> all I want to do is I just want to talk about all the things I really liked about Kaiji. This isn't a review. Uh, all the reviews say go watch it, and I agree. Just go watch it. That's my review. This is Twins Gushes About All the Things She Liked About an Anime. <laughs> I love the opening song, The Future Is In Our Hands. Unfortunately, I think the animation during the OP and ED are where it's at its hardest to come to grips with. The team seemed to have gotten more comfortable with this art style as the show progressed, and especially into season two, it looks great. You can see the growing pains the most during these MVs, but it's still charming in its own right. Kaiji starts out as a pretty dumb, naive kid who gets duped super easily, and I like that we quickly get to see Kaiji grow up and start to really think about the games as he goes forward, and I like that that growth feels natural too. When Kaiji is hoarding the rock cards and his crew notice that someone must be hoarding the papers, it's so cool. I've never felt so much from the sentence, why are the scissors going down so fast? The way Kaiji beats Fanai by remembering how one of the cards got flushed was so good, because I had long since forgotten about that event. It shows you that all the answers are right in front of you. They don't hide how the game can be won, you just have to pay attention. This shot is very cool and good. I like that we get to see the other room on Espoir. They could have just kept it a nebulous bad end, a no-stakes representation of Kaiji losing. But this anime is not afraid to actually show us just how bad things can be if Kaiji loses. And this is a great way to show the audience just how deep the shit is for our hero. Kaiji stealing this jackass's rings so he could pay for Kaiji's release from the other room to get them back was so fucking cool and a great demonstration of the clever tactics we'll see from Kaiji moving forward. As a whole, the human race is my least favorite arc of Kaiji, as it lacks the mind games and strategy we see in other gambles Kaiji participates in. That being said though, I do like that this is the first instance where Kaiji takes on the role of a leader. While he had his group on the boat, from here on out they always make sure to give Kaiji a team to lead or to at least root for him, and I think that's really cool. It makes Kaiji go from just a guy to really being somebody in this world of underground gambling. And I especially like that this newfound leadership happens with Kaiji drawing lines on the guy's shoes to help them stay centered on the beams. It's really sweet, and I like that from here on out, it's no longer Kaiji versus other gamblers, but rather Kaiji and the other gamblers versus the Tei company that has them all in debt. It's good to have a common bad guy for these adventures. The fact that Ishida stops himself from screaming so as to not mess up Kaiji is heartbreaking, man. It's just... From the moment Kaiji finds the glass bridge to the real doors, I held my breath. I was so tense that I just couldn't breathe until Kaiji was on solid ground again. And once he did, I was so relieved I needed to take a break. <laughs> E-card and the potential ear-piercing device Kaiji wears during it was what I had been waiting for the whole time. And I think it's a real testament to the show that despite going in expecting to watch Kaiji get his ear stabbed, and I was fine with that, by the time I got here, I was enraptured by how badly I wanted him to win and avoid that grisly fate. The device monitoring Kaiji's vitals, allowing Tonegawa to cheat, was also a twist I super wasn't expecting. This show isn't afraid to get pretty far out with its gambling gimmicks. Kaiji breaking the mirror so he can cut off his ear and by proxy the cheating device is so cool. It's so fucking cool. This is the coolest part of the season. It's the thing that has all the coolest fan art. It's my favorite. He looks so cool. This is when I started to fall in love with Kaiji Ito. <laughs> Kaiji choosing to do his makeshift lottery was one of the most stressful things I've watched in anime. I spent the last handful of episodes wrapped up in my own arms with every muscle tensed. This show is great at really making you care. This moment where Kaiji realizes he's lost the winning lottery piece... It's devastating. This whole time building up to see if Hyodo would pull the winning lottery, I was just thinking, God, oh God, please, please God, please God, oh God, please, please God. I wanted Kaiji to win. I wanted luck to be on his side. I wanted everything to work out. 
He didn't. There were no tricks left, and just like with real gambling, God didn't save him. And it's this moment that really sticks with me. I was worried that I would be disappointed with season 2. While ending on a devastatingly low note, I really loved the first season, and I didn't want that to get spoiled by a mediocre season 2. Luckily, that fear was unfounded, and I actually liked the second season even more! The opening song isn't as good this time around, in my opinion, but the visuals have really gotten an upgrade. Similar to the other room on the Espoir, having the Black Suits kidnap Kaiji to have him work off his debt in the underground labor camp is a great way to visualize the gravity of the situation. It's also great that it gave him a group of friends to rescue with the 45ers. It's nice that Kaiji doesn't feel like one man taking on the Yakuza all alone anymore. I really like this shot, and I don't think I need to explain myself. This episode is my favorite. When I first watched it, I liked it so much, I just immediately rewatched it again. I love the reveal about how Otsuki was cheating by using specially made dice, Kaiji making his own special dice by using the bones from Utsuki's steaks, and his own blood is so fucking rad! Kaiji using Otsuki's own rules against him to win even more money by having him deal twice is the kind of adrenaline rush I live for. <gasps> this is when I officially fell in love with Kaiji Ito. <laughs> <laughs> Green flannel kaiji is best outfit kaiji. This moment where kaiji scares away some goons by showing them the scars from his reattached fingers is also the first time we, the audience, gets to see him with his gloves off. It's a super fun reveal. Sakazaki is another great addition to kaiji's friend list. Since Sakazaki does choose to put his faith into things like fate and luck, he acts as a great foil to kaiji who plans things out significantly more. Most of the season is dedicated to Kaiji and crew facing up against a giant pachinko machine titled The Bog, and it's fascinating how gripping this still was. The Bog is a machine. Kaiji can't play mind games with it like how he could with Tonegawa. Despite all the planning he puts into it at the end of the day, there's still an element of chance that has to go into beating The Bog, and yet they do an excellent job of keeping you invested and keeping Kaiji still active in their plans to win. I like how much time we spend away from the gambling in Season 2. For Season 1, practically all of our time was spent in the Espoir or the Starside Hotel. Here, despite taking 17 episodes to challenge the bug, Kaiji isn't trapped in the casino this time. Allowing him and the others to run around as they plan their attack not only helps this world to feel more fleshed out and three-dimensional, but it does the same for the characters too. Getting to see Kaiji, Sakazaki, and Endo exist outside the parameters of gambling really grounds them and makes them feel more real. I had to look away while watching the scene. Despite being a quote-unquote small injury compared to losing an ear or your fingers, what Ichijo does to Kaiji is heinous on like a totally different level, and the fact he does this to all 10 of Kaiji's fingers is what really solidifies him as a top-tier bad guy here. Even with his sympathetic backstory, every time you see Kaiji's hands after this, you're reminded of how much you want this slimy bastard to lose. So, the show has these little cutaways sometimes that sort of visualize a metaphor for how things are going with the gambling. And season 1 had these too, but I think they just really upped their game with them for season 2. These are a lot of fun. I just want to say that when they first explained that the big problem with the bog was the third plate, and that there's a small bump that prevents the balls from entering the winning hole, my first thought was, flood the plates. If Kaiji could get multiple balls to the plate at once, then they could knock each other into the winning hole easier. And I'm proud that in every way, I was right. <laughs> Technically, the stakes are lower for Kaiji here. Losing doesn't put him in physical risk this time. He'll have to go back to the labor camp where he'd very likely fall ill and die, but there isn't the same sort of drama around losing a body part like with season 1. However, since the thing that is at stake is actually the freedom of Kaiji's friends, this fight against the bog was just as nerve-wracking as watching him play E-Card. The fact that Kaiji was playing for others and that he cared so much about helping them meant the show kept that amazing tension, and I'm really impressed with that. 
After 11 episodes of nerve-wracking back and forths with the bug, seeing Kaiji finally win was so exciting, I laughed and cried. <laughs> it's the fact that the show does go to such low lows that makes these highs feel so high. While it's sad seeing Endo steal so much of Kaiji's winnings via his bogus contract, it is perhaps a good idea to not totally fix all of Kaiji's monetary problems all at once. <laughs> Kaiji spending the rest of his money on gambling because he's stupid is honestly hilarious. What a dumbo. But for real, this black suit giving Kaiji some money so he could afford to go eat dinner with his newly freed friends is really sweet. It's nice knowing that the black suits aren't all bad. Seeing Kaiji get to celebrate with his friends is so nice, and they play the futures in our hands during it, and it just- it ruins me! I love this so much! <laughs> The manga for Kaiji is still ongoing, and I knew that going into season two. Uh, and so I was really worried that season two would have a very unsatisfying conclusion, and I'm really happy that that wasn't the case. Season two's ending is a very, very satisfying way to leave off Kaiji's adventures, even, even though he doesn't beat the Yakuza. He doesn't fix all of his money problems, but, you know, after everything that happens, it's it's such a happy victory for Kaiji that leaving you off there is really nice. And, and even if you allowed yourself to be spoiled by watching my video here, I hope you do still watch Kaiji. It's a lot of fun. And even when you know what's gonna happen, it's still nerve-wracking watching the sequence play out. They're really good at, like, pacing and, and timing and and everything. I really love this anime, and, and that's it. There, there we go. <laughs>